The pipeline industry has a relatively good safety record, given the thousands of miles of pipelines owned and operated by the industry. But our network of pipelines is getting old. Many pipelines that are still in operation are 50 years old or older. But when incidents do occur, they can be catastrophic with loss of life and property. By far the most common cause of pipeline failures is damage resulting from excavation. Never excavate without being absolutely sure you know what is underground and never excavate without obtaining all the permits required for the A major concern when entering many types of facilities is personal protective equipment. Pipeline facilities are no different. Everyone entering a pipeline facility must wear personal protective equipment. This includes, but is not limited to, an approved hard hat, clear safety glasses with side shields, some facilities allow tinted safety glasses while others may prohibit them, check with the facility supervisor regarding the use of shaded safety glasses. Goggles and face shields may also be required depending on the job you are performing. You must wear proper gloves when handling material that could cut, tear, or injure your skin. Leather shoes, usually with a defined heel, must be worn. In some cases, shoes with steel toes must be worn. You must wear long pants and shirts with sleeves. Long sleeves are recommended as they can offer a little more protection. Clothing made of 100% cotton is recommended. Some facilities require special fire retardant clothing. Fire retardant clothing is also required. When parking, it is preferable to position the vehicle so that it can be moved without backing. Pull-through parking is preferred. When pull-through parking is not possible, the vehicle should be backed in unless this results in a hazard. In such cases, head-first parking should be used. If you must back up to exit a parking space, do so with caution. Leave your keys in the vehicle's ignition, just in case it has to be moved in an emergency and remove or lock up any valuables you may have with you. Whenever the vehicle is in motion, the lights must be on, and always follow the posted speed limit. Transported or purchased products or chemicals may present health or physical hazards. We are committed to the Hazard Communications Act, known as HAZCOM. This act is designed to inform you of any hazards associated with the chemicals or products you may come in contact with. The program is detailed in the HAZCOM manual located at this facility. The manual documents the type, quantity, and location of hazardous substances in the facility, along with control measures to prevent or minimize your exposure to these materials. It also contains information on how to obtain material safety data sheets, or MSDSs, and complete labeling requirements for containers holding these materials. The MSDS provides information on potentially hazardous substances. Recently, pipeline security has become a paramount topic within the industry. We must all be vigilant and constantly on alert for acts of sabotage and terrorism. If you see suspicious activity, report it immediately. Common sense, being alert, and knowing who belongs in an area is vital to security. If something doesn't make sense or look right, then report it. Legitimate personnel will not be offended by such inquiries. Areas where acts of terrorism may occur include, but are not limited to, isolated pump stations, meter stations, and areas where the pipeline is visible, to name a few. It is generally agreed that right-of-ways, pump stations, and meter stations that are kept clean and neat are usually perceived to be visited or patrolled more frequently than areas that are not kept well maintained. The fact is, pipeline security has really never been a serious threat in the United States until now. Remember, safety.